Hello everybody, welcome to, you know what, the return of the kids Bible study. Uh, I apologize for everybody, I mean, um, I apologize that, you know, I, I was really thinking of a way to encompass everybody and to, to just uh, make sure to reach as many people as possible. Uh, but God continues to prick more hearts about the young people, about children, really. I mean, you know, we're almost coming back to school, and school's not even normal either. I mean, like, a lot of the news are telling us, and, and even the governor's uh, orders is that it's going to be distance learning. And I was thinking, man, we need our children to learn. Um, they, we need our children to learn their Bible. They need to 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 be able to uh, to know Bible stories and, and be able to just, yeah. Um, so welcome back to kids Bible study. And I hope that you guys, uh, will have your children learn, uh, listen in. And so I hope that you guys are ready. Um, and we're going to jump right to it. Now I want to do some quick recap before we get to the lesson that we have today. I'm going to go with this by this Bible story by Bible story chronologically. And I don't know how long this will be. Um, and uh, I don't know uh, how many days or how many months this 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 will be. But I, I think this will be pretty cool because it's going to be I'm going to give you guys the Bible story and I'm going to give you some Bible principles that we can learn from that Bible story. Now, of course, um, there are so many things. Every time you read the Bible, there's going to be so many things that you can learn. Uh, but uh, I hope that these will these some these small principles can be something that we can apply to our lives, and that you kids can watch this video and be like, "Hey, you know what? I I I can learn that." So let's go for the beginning. Throw back to the beginning. <laughs> All right. So let's go back all the way to the beginning. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And so day one of creation, day one of creation is that God creates light. Okay, God creates light. The Bible says in Genesis 1, verse 3, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. So in the middle of everything, of nothing, okay. It, it, you can't even imagine nothing because nothing is nothing. It's not black. It, it's just nothing. But in the middle of that, and by the way, the Bible says here that God created in the beginning. So that means God was already there. Okay, He wasn't created at the beginning. He wasn't the light that was created. No, He created light. So God was there god is in eternity past god is in that present and god is in the future and, and then god is okay um that's why there is that that phrase in the bible i am that i am uh, that that's um he's he is god is and so day one god created light day two god created the firmament god created the heaven Okay, uh, he, the Bible says in verse 6, let there be a firmament in the midst of the water and let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay, and so he divides the waters. Now we talked about this, how uh, the, how heaven, okay, there are three parts and the Bible talks about that. There are three parts as we can see. There is the atmospheric heaven that we see here with the clouds and the blue sky. Then there is uh, outer space and that is the second heaven and then there is the third heaven which God resides uh, and then and, and the, the Christians resides the believers reside okay that is the third heaven now day three day three God the Bible says the, the God creates land okay that God separates the the land and the sky okay so, so there's there's that there just that difference now and then uh, in the midst of that, he then also adds on plants. Okay, so that's that's day three. Okay, then day four, day four. So after day three, he creates earth in itself and it's foundational, uh, ready for life. Then he creates space. Okay, all the universe. Okay, the rest of the universe. He creates the planets. He creates the the stars. And the Bible says that he created the sun and the moon to uh, to talk about the seasons and the days and all that. So that's day four then he comes back to earth and he now brings life moving life the animals 
but he only does the sky the, 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 the birds and the waters okay and of course there's so many of them he creates that then in day six he creates the rest okay the land animals all the creeping things in the land right and then in day six he also creates the most special creature that he has created and that is man the bible says that he in verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over cattle and over the, all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeping on earth and god created so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them that's genesis 1 26 and 1 27. then i want to continue reading in verse uh in chapter 2 chapter 2 the bible says and the lord god formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and so here we now see okay that god creates all okay god creates everything and he creates man in the end of this okay now as man lives man has this wonderful and perfect relationship with god uh they meet up with each other they they they're they're friends there they talk and then god gives man a responsibility god tells man hey adam uh go name the animals okay so god gives adam work to do okay so kids remember work is not consequence of sin okay now there are times where we do have work as a consequence because of sin um, but that's that's not the case work started way before sin and so it's important for us to understand that work is something that it's important it's something that's fundamental in our being and so God gives Adam to work uh, puts him to work and Adam goes right away and starts naming the animals he names an elephant an elephant he names a dolphin a dolphin he names a lion a lion all of these things right then Adam, uh, as he's working, God looks at his creation and goes and says, I see the two the elephants, there's male and female. I see the lions, male and female. I see the, the, the dogs, male and female. I see the, the dolphins, male and female. I see uh, the seahorses, male and female. I see I see all the animals from having male and females. They're just in partnership, but Adam doesn't have one. And so the Bible says in verse 18, and God said, it is not good that man should be alone I will make a help meet for him. And out of the ground, the, God, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam, he called every living creature that was the name thereof. And Adam gave name to all the cattle and to all to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. And this is where it's at. So the, the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of the ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. This is the first uh, live surgery here. Okay, God is the first surgeon. And the rib which the, which the Lord God had taken from man, he made he a woman and brought her into the man. And so after God creates, yeah, there's a, um, after God created everything, Adam is now put to work. But then he saw that Adam needs to help me. And so he God creates Eve for Adam. You see here, okay. Let's. Let, this is. This is. Um, this is important. You know, God is the one that's going to build the family. God is the one that builds the home. God brings two people together, okay, and builds the home from there. The Bible continues on and talks about the relationship of a man and his wife, okay, and that they're together. They're one flesh, and so they're they're there. Now, verse chapter 3 is one of the saddest chapters in the Bible because this is where man fell into sin. This is where you and I, this is the reason why you and I have sin, okay? why there is sin in ourselves, there is sin in our bodies. Okay? So, the Bible says, starts off, that the serpent is more subtle than any beast of the field. Okay? And so this is Satan taking the form of a serpent and deceives Eve. And he lies 
to Eve. He lies about God's goodness. He lies about God's judgment. He lies about God's uh, sovereignty, his power. He lies about all that. He, he, the famous phrase, hath God said? Like he questions what God said to Eve when clearly Eve knows what God said. But somehow Satan, being the father of deception, of, all, all, of lies, twists the words. And so this is very careful, guys. Okay, a half truth is a full lie, and so the the serpent, the demon, the Satan twist the words to um, twist the words to uh, influence Eve, and so Eve here falls. The Bible says. Uh, in verse 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant for the eyes, and the tree was to desire to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, uh, her husband with her, and he did eat. When they, this is the, the, the three sin, the three, the temptation series, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, right there. When it's good to the eyes, my eye goes, ooh, I like that. The flesh, oh, I want that. The pride of life, oh, that will make my life better. Selfishness right there. They, they, they fell into sin. See, right here, this is the moment where man fell. When they disobeyed God. Because the thing is that in, in, the, in the garden, God specifically said, you can have everything else except for that one tree the one in the middle of the garden avoid it okay don't eat of it don't don't take part of it you can have everything else except for that so to review this this lesson okay god has given us a wonderful life okay god has given us everything that we need but Satan's going to want us to go for the, those things that we cannot get. And Satan will lie about that. And Satan will bring uh, uh, deception about that. And so the temptation of sin will make our focus slowly turn to that one thing. And so be careful of the lies of Satan. Be careful to the lies that, that, that Satan throws at you. Because God is good. And God is always powerful. God is always sovereign. God has a plan. See, there's a lot of things right now. For example, a God, you know, Satan might tell you, "Well, look at look at this. You can't. You know, it, it's you're only you're at home. You're not with your friends. You you don't have that. And so, be bitter towards God, or you be bitter towards your parents. And 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 in reality, you have everything in your in your your, your what you have. You, you have health." You have family that, that cares about you. You have food under the table. You, you, you can go to, uh, you know, watch TV and all that. Like, literally, you kids are blessed right now. What Satan's going to say, oh, be better about that one thing. So he turns. He makes you turn. He makes you doubt about God. It makes you, about you bitter about God. It makes you bitter about your parents. It makes you bitter about the situation that you have. That's what Satan's going to do. And so if, if you are now bitter, if you're like, I'm fed up with this, what do you do? You rebel. And so Adam and Eve rebelled here, and it caused them destruction. The Bible says that when, uh, when upon eating the fruit... Adam and Eve realized that they were naked, and so they were ashamed. They felt guilty. They felt sorrowful. And so they 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 run and hide and, and Adam, the Bible says that Adam built leaves, put leaves together to make themselves clothing. And there are times where you're gonna feel the guilt and you're going to feel the sin and, and you're going to be like, man, I messed up. And you're going to try your very hardest to, 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 to appease that, to, to you know, pay for that sin when it's not, it's not enough. Here we see that Adam tried to pay for that sin, tried to cover the shame, tried to cover the guilt, but it was never enough. The Bible says in the coolness of the day, 
God comes down and looks for them. Now, of course, God knows where they are. He's all-knowing, but he wanted to hear it from them. God calls for Adam. Adam, where are you guys? Adam says, we're hiding from you, Lord, because we have sinned, because we know we're naked. And God says, well, how do you know you're naked? And then Adam starts this whole blame game. The Bible says, and the man and, uh, said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me the, of the tree and did eat. And then God continues on, Eve, what happened? Oh, it's a serpent that tempted me, and I did eat. And so here, the blame game starts. You know, the Bible is very clear that be sure that your sins will find you out. The Bible says that whatever you reap, I mean, whatever you sow, you shall also reap. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. And whatsoever thou sowest, that thou shalt also reap. You know, here, Adam have to face that sin. He can't say, well, because Eve did it. No, 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 Adam, but you did it. Eve, you did it. You guys did it. You guys have to face that consequences. You guys have to face sin. And so they did. The Bible says that, you know, that they, that their sorrows were multiplied, that they, that Adam had to work uh for for provision and the bible says that he he will hurt, work hard to till the ground uh with with um eve she will have her um sorrows of birth be multiplied um and so they had to face the consequences they had to face the consequences and then god sacrifices a lamb where the blood is shed and then the skin was given to Adam and Eve to clothe them. And that's there the picture of Jesus. And we talked about that before. The picture of Jesus is an innocent, like an innocent animal whose blood had to be sacrificed, whose, who had his death had, was necessary so that they could find salvation. See, we need Jesus for our salvation. And if you don't know 100% sure that Jesus is your Savior. If you have never accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, and you know that you're that you that you you don't know if you're going to heaven, I urge you, talk to your parents. Okay, ask them, Mom, Dad, how do can I be saved? Because your works is never going to be enough. It's only by God's grace. God is the one that gave us Jesus. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, even in the beginning story, God was already providing salvation. Even in the beginning of all times, even though in the beginning where he gave everything, you know, he still gave more to Jesus. Why? Because he loves us. He cares for us. He doesn't look at you and says, man, you're so broken. No, he looks at you and says, I can use you. I, the, your life still has value because I sent my son Jesus to die in the cross. Just a little recap of what we have been learning. A little review. This is the first three chapters of the Bible. And we're going to go to the next chapter, chapter 4. And chapter 4 is really sad. Chapter 4 is one of those, why? And it's interesting because in chapter 3, we do see the prophecy of Jesus Christ. Chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And I shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the first prophecy of Jesus Christ. This is the very first prophecy in the book, in the Bible, that talks about Jesus Christ. And so as Adam and Eve was kicked out of heaven, <laughs> sorry, at uh, uh, Garden of Eden, they've been waiting. They've been waiting for the Messiah. 
for the son of Adam that will take take them out of this person status. And so the Bible says in chapter four, verse one, and Adam and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. See, this is, was a, this was a moment of celebration. The Cain was a moment of, of, of joy because they thought that Cain was the Messiah. They thought that finally we have a son that will take us from this wretched situation, from take us from this wretched sin that we have. He will be the bridge to God. But of course, that's not the case. But to Adam and Eve, they thought he was him. And the Bible says that, that Eve conceived again, and that was Abel. Cain became a tiller of the ground, meaning he a farmer, and Abel became a shepherd, okay, keeper of the sheep. And the Bible says that in the process of time, meaning time passed, and that they grew up, Adam, I mean, Adam and Eve were still there, and they'd been teaching their kids what to do. They've been teaching the kids how to worship God. They've been teaching the kids uh, who is God. I mean, they don't have that, that fellowship anymore like they had, but they, they talk to those kids. They talk to, the, to, uh, to, uh, to Abel, uh, Cain and Abel, and they shared to them, man, God, is what, God was really good, and God is still good. And they talk about the fellowship that they have. They talk about the, 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 the real uh, experience that they can have with God. And so for Abel and Cain, this was firsthand. And the Bible says that as they grow up, they come to the moment where they had to make their own sacrifice. No longer are they coming from, the law, from, from, uh, from their parents. It's their now responsibility for their own and their families. The Bible says that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord. Now, this is, again, as we talked about this, Cain is a farmer. He worked hard for these fruits. He worked hard to, to maintain these vegetables, these things that, that they would survive and that they would be the very best. He maintained that. It was his works. And he offers it to God. Then Abel... He cannot really take care much about the sheep. I mean, all he has to do is just make sure that they are protected, that they can be taken care of. But it's going to be on the, on the mercy of God on how he will, will deem who is worthy. And so Abel looks around and, and, and sees the very best sheep that he can get. Again, this is, this is from the flock that God is the only one who can really take care of them. He's just being a... Uh, a shepherd there. And so he takes that sheep, offers it. Cain, of course, brings his very best, offers it. So as both of them offers it, God looks at Cain and says, God looks at Abel's and says, Now, here's the question. Why? Why did God reject Cain's sacrifice? Cain's sacrifice was the very best that he could offer. It's the very best fruits. He worked hard on this. God, this was uh, Cain's, you know, blood and sweat and tears type of thing. And Abel, he just picked the very best. It's not like he did anything to it. Well, this is where it's at. As we talked about before, the coat of the animal that Adam and Eve wore was a sacrifice made by God. It wasn't a sacrifice of Adam. It wasn't a, a, a deal that Adam had done. It's that it wasn't you know, the, the Adam's clothing that was made of fig leaves. God says that's not enough. Your works is never enough. Cain, you did your very best. But it's never worthy enough. Abel, you know that it's by my mercy that this, this, this lamb will grow. It's by my grace that I allow you. And so therefore, that is enough. See, Cain thought that his works, 
is enough for God's blessings. See, let's understand this. God blesses people not because they deserve it, but that's because God allows it. God is the one, the only one, by His grace that will offer whatever we are. Whatever state we are, it's by God's grace. I mean, Paul talks about this. He says, I am what I am. And he talks about that because of God's grace. By the grace of God, I am what I am. See, Cain here thought, hey, you know what? I can work. I, I, can, I, can, I can do this. I, I can offer myself. I can save my salvation. I can offer my, my works for my salvation. No. It's never enough. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. And to pay for those wages, it's not going to be our goodness. Because the Bible talks about in Isaiah that our righteousness are like as filthy rags. See, for we are we all sin and we have come short to the glory of God. And so Cain here was given a harsh lesson. But it was a lesson that he can learn. It was a lesson that he's been given a second chance with. Because the Bible talks about in verse, <clears throat> verse uh, 5, But unto Cain and to his offerings he had not respect. Is the Lord not having respect? And Cain was very wroth. I mean, I would be too. You would be. You did your very best and says, and God says, nope, not enough. I would be angry too. But then the Lord approaches Cain. The Lord did not just walk away. The Lord did not just like, well, you're going to have to figure it out on yourself. No, the Lord approaches Cain in verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, why are thou wroth? Why are you angry? And why does thou countenance fell? Why have your face just go, mm. why are you discontented? Why are you bitter? See, if thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at door. He gives him a warning. He says, Cain, if you do well, you will be accepted. If you don't, you're going to just lead yourself to do sin. The verse or next, and unto thee shall that shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. See the sin, the sin will rule over you if you don't correct yourself. Now, verse eight, and Cain talked with Abel his brother. So Cain was even thinking about this, and he go he goes to Abel and says, Abel, what just happened? How come yours was 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 uh, was uh, was accepted and not mine? They, they, that's probably one of the conversations. But instead of Cain learning from his mistake, instead of Cain accepting the mistake that he did and fixing it, instead of him asking for forgiveness and saying, you know what, okay, let me fix it your way, Lord. The Bible says, and it came to pass when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. What a sad thought. Cain, who was deemed, who was thought of to be the Messiah, who, who, who had this great reputation that, hey, man, you're the one we're expecting, coming from his parents. You're, you're the one that God promised. He becomes a murderer and kills not somebody else but his own brother what a sad thought that is what a sad moment in history this is you see it's important for us to understand that when bitterness comes to our lives it is a cancer that will eat you up and will never stop until you cut it off it will continue to eat you up. And it won't just affect you. It's going to affect others too. Because the reaction that you have, the pressure from that bitterness will overflow and affect others. There's many lessons that we can learn here with Cain and Abel. But this is my, la my last lesson for you guys. We talked about 
the forgiveness of God, how he's always mercy, is, is just everlasting. He always gives us second chances. That's first. Number two, that the bitterness that Cain gained could have been forgiven. It could have been it could have been gone if he just humbled himself. But he didn't. In the life that he has, and the Bible talks about this later on, and God calls him out on it. God calls out Abel and he gives him a horrendous punishment. The Bible says that he will be hunted down. And Cain says, my, my life is not, it's, it's too much, Lord. It's not, it's not right. He let his bitterness come about. You see, it's important to keep our, ourselves in check. There will be bitterness. There will be some moments where you're going to be bitter. There are going to be some moments where you're going to feel discontented. There's going to be moments where, where you feel like nothing seems right. And, and 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 here's the thing, this is not the, the situation because remember in, in Genesis three, Eve was feeling the same thing because of the lies of Satan, and so the fundamental lesson that I want us to learn for this this lesson here is don't let bitterness take hold in your heart. Whether you're bitter because of discontent, whether you're bitter because you feel jealous whether you you're bitter because you have been you feel like you've been wrong whatever bitterness that is cut that off and seek the truth because bitterness comes with a with a wrong perspective bitterness comes from having the wrong perspective if we shut those things out if we cut the the bitterness out and actually understand the truth we will find peace. So, how's your perception today? How, what, what, how, how do you see your life today? Are you, are you feeling unhappy? Are you feeling like, man, I wish blank? I, man, I, I, I wish I could do blank. Are you this person that's discontented? Are you this person that feels like everybody else is having fun? You're, you're jealous of them? and Cut that bitterness off. Cut that bitterness off. And change perspective. Bitterness comes from a wrong perspective. I hope that you guys have learned something today. Next week, we're going to be going through another story. Um, uh, we're going to be pretty much, I, I, we might be just doing chapter by chapter, but I hope that you guys um, will be continuing this. Now, I have a big announcement. Uh, I, I hope that you guys stayed for this, but this, I mean, this is towards the end. But I'm going to make an announcement also on, on Wednesday separately. But uh, we are going to be having our VBS. Uh, it's going to be next um, next uh, week. It's going to be virtual. Uh, so I need you guys to register. The registration website will be up uh, sometime tonight or tomorrow morning. And so keep an eye out for that. I want you guys to register. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to be getting some, uh, some activities for you guys to do. Uh, and then if you guys watch, there's going to be, um, there's going to be links in our uh, in our videos in our youtube videos and our in facebook videos that you can click on and then you're going to gain some points from there whenever you you, you do the activities um, or answer the questions you're going to have some uh, points for that uh, and whoever has the most points will win some prizes there's going to be first second third prizes and of course um, we're going to be mailing that to you but i hope that you guys uh, will have fun with us um, so I hope uh, this year's VBS is theme is um, till the ends of the world. Um, and so I hope that you guys um, will join us for that. So, uh, okay, keep an eye out for VBS stuff. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.